Okay, well, we're, we're back with our guest who we've done a little discovery with on part one, and we found that there were quite a few um, visitors traveling along with her, and we were not happy about that. And uh, what we were talking about is how is the best way to get rid of them. And I showed what was in my mouth, and basically it was Death Valley on a hot day, nothing moving, right. and there was quite a difference. Very big difference. Okay, so what we're going to do is we've developed a very simple plan. Actually, I bet that my mouth is much cleaner than yours. We know that. We've scientifically evaluated that. But I bet I spend less time doing it than you do Probably. to get to that. And the secret is to be very efficient in your actions. And so let's start off with what I do. So. What I use is this Perio Bright toothpaste. This is a natural toothpaste that has no chemicals, no preservatives, no um, sodium oral sulfate, that's very important, or none of its masquerading derivatives like sodium cockle glutamate and a whole bunch of other things that people have heard me talk about over the years that are equally bad but, but are just a little different name. And um, use a toothpaste like that, and, and I could go on for a whole other segment teaching you just about what the difference is between toothpaste, but let, for now let's just get rid of the bugs. Okay. And, and uh, you take a tiny little bit, all you need is a pea-sized amount of the toothpaste on your regular toothbrush, a little tiny pea-sized amount, and then brush for your typical 30 seconds to a minute, something like that, whatever, you, whatever you're used to doing. Now you saw me grab my toothbrush out of this. This is a little shot glass. And what I do is I keep the toothbrush, and this is a tip for an electric toothbrush, we'll talk about it in a minute, and this is a tip for an oral irrigator, like a water pick or a hydrofloss or via jet. And what we're gonna do is pick this up, it sits on the bathroom counter, we're gonna dump out the peroxide, we're gonna rinse this out in the water and clean it out, and it's ready to use again. This is our, our toothbrush sterilizer. Okay, we're going to take our toothbrush, rinse it off in running water, and we're going to use a pea-sized amount of the toothpaste on here, and then we're going to just brush your normal way, rinse it out, put it back in your shot glass. With hydrogen peroxide that you would buy at the supermarket hydrogen or anywhere Hydrogen peroxide else. absolutely doesn't have to be food grade. You're not eating it. You're not ingesting it. But it's and, cool. and you're going to use full strength. No, just have to cover the bristles. Don't okay. waste your hydrogen peroxide. In fact, most of them come with little... Uh, seals on it, what I'd like to do is I take the tip of my irrigator tip, which is nice and, and pointy, and I just punch a little hole in it, and then it becomes a squirt bottle. Perfect. And that's how, I, that's how I do it at home. Okay, so we've got our irrigator tip. Now this is the tip of a, of a very special electric toothbrush. This is called a rotodent, and this is what it looks like. And it runs on a battery, and it runs very slowly with very soft bristles. And um, I have no economic ties to this company, but I do like their toothbrush very much. And the reason I like it is because of this. If you, if you look at the big toothbrush and you hold it across your fingers, you'll see that there's a groove here that the bristles, no matter how much you squeeze down here, never get to. And this area here is, is touched by the bristles of this little rotary toothbrush. Now imagine that this fingernail and your finger is the, the area right where the tooth emerges from the gums. This toothbrush gets right in there, turns very slowly, goes in between the teeth, goes here, and you do this all the way around. Now I have to tell you, I typically don't use toothpaste when I'm using this because I've already brushed my teeth with toothpaste and, and I, I will just use this and I, I almost always do this watching television or at my computer, reading my email or something, and I'll just go around my mouth, all the way around my mouth, and I'm not gonna put this in my mouth, it's not sterile, but I go around all inside and outside uh, until my mouth feels squeaky clean. Every bit as clean as the day you walk out of the dental office after you've had your hygienist clean your teeth. And that'll be every single time you use this. Okay, now the tip comes off, and these go back into your glass, and you pour in your hydrogen peroxide. Now, if you're a flosser, now's the time to floss. You've gotten most of your mouth clean. Remember, this area between your teeth 
hey, you've gotten in there pretty good, but there still might be an area that you didn't reach. So the floss goes, the little floss goes in between your teeth and it breaks up anything between the contact. Now your dental hygienist may have told you to grab that floss and work it down below the gum line and act like a saw. Well, I'm going to tell you, I think that is totally incorrect because that is like a cheese cutter slicing through your gums. A lot of people hurt when they do that, and I think it's really not the right thing to do. But you can use dental floss, but you have to be very gentle with it and never go below the gum line. Never, ever, ever take the dental floss below the gum line. It's a really bad mistake. Okay. I personally don't floss as much anymore. I use a toothpick. I like to take the toothpick and I can work it into those areas between my gums and, and I go around right at the call and I can clean everything and break things up. Now just like you would wash dishes or, or wash a car, the only things that get clean are the places that you touch. Okay, if you take a plate of lasagna and run it under the water, it doesn't come clean. You need to take the scrubby with the soap and water. That's your toothbrush and toothpaste. If you're washing a car, you need that soapy sponge to touch everything. If you just spray the hose on it, it doesn't get clean. So what happens is, in your mouth, we're using the, the floss and the brush, and we're getting everything above the gum line clean, but we're, we're not flushing away everything that we just broke loose. And that step that, that you know you need to do with your dishes to rinse them off after you've scrubbed and, and with your car that you have to rinse it off after you've scrubbed, you're not doing. So we need one more tool and that tool is an oral irrigator. This happens to be a Hydrofloss, um, one of the good brands. Again, Waterpick makes a good one and, and um, Viajet is another good one. But what's most important in using an oral irrigator actually is the tip. And the tip that I'm using here on this irrigator is a special tip that's designed to go below the gum line. It's a tiny little tip. If you take the regular tip that comes with the irrigators, and I don't know what I did, but I don't have my prop here, and I can't stop to find it. So let me show you. This little tiny tip, you can angle at the gum line and get below the gum line because the bacteria that live below the gum line are the problems. And if you remember back in, in our part one of the video, I showed you that you had spirochetes. Well, the spirochetes are a, a, a very special type of bacteria. They live below the gum line in colonies and they can eat into your bloodstream. They actually get into your bloodstream and they can form colonies in your arteries and that's part of the reason for heart disease and that's all talked about in the book. But when you have an antimicrobial in here, and we'll talk about what that is in a minute, you can put it here, direct it around the tooth and flush these spirochetes out and change the environment so that the bacteria don't want to come back and live there and these pockets will heal. If, if you've been told that you have you know anything more than two millimeter pockets by your hygienist and let me bring this little chart out here and show you. Whoops. Okay got it. And once you reach two millimeters that's as deep as you can get with floss or with mouthwash or with a toothbrush. You cannot get below there using those standard tools. And two millimeters, trust me, is nothing. So when you get to five millimeters and four millimeters, the only way you can get them clean, the only way you can get to those pathogens living below the gum line is to use this oral irrigator. Now the oral irrigator, let's, let's just use this analogy. If your hands are clean, you can wash them in clean water and they stay clean. If your hands are dirty, like I was working in my garden, you need to get some soap, put some soap on your hands, scrub them and rinse them off and, and that's going to get the dirt off. Well, in your mouth where you have all of these bacteria, you need to use something that breaks down the biofilm. That's what these bacteria make. They make a water repellent film above the gum line and that's what the toothpaste is helping to break down with all these different scrubbing things we're doing. But then 
we have to get below the gum line. So we use a product that is called Perio Cleanse. It's a cleanser that's designed specifically to go in an oral irrigator. And this, this solution gets pumped into the irrigator and then you take this tub and hold it under warm water. Check the water temperature. It has to be the right temperature. And that right temperature is dependent on what feels comfortable for your mouth. If it's too hot, then you're not going to like it. If it's too cold, you're not going to like it. So you're going to figure out what that is for you. And then you're going to run the water into this solution that we put in here. Make sure it dissolves. Shake it around a little bit. And you're only going to need about half of the tub full to do this because the opening on the tip of the irrigator that you're going to be using is so tiny that it's going to restrict the flow. This is not, and I want you to look at me right now, this is not an oral pressure cleaner. This is a dispenser for an antimicrobial to flush the bacteria out below the gum line. It is not to pressure clean your mouth. And you need to have a, a small tip designed to go below the gum line to do this. The big tip that comes with it, I call the fire hose. And, and what it does is it just ricochets off the gums and goes all over your bathroom mirror, making a big mess. Okay? So, um, now that is all on a, a sheet of paper, what I just said. Now there's another thing that happened on your slide, and let's go back to your thinking about part one, what we found on your slide, and that was that we saw a lot of small little coxal forms, they either strep or staph. Okay. And typically my understanding of what we have found, because I have done now about 25,000 of these little slides on people, is that you have tonsils. and and. Almost every single person, and you see you do have tonsils, because almost every single person who has tonsils has a chronic tonsillar infection. They've had tonsillitis once or twice in their life, the tonsils remain infected, and the only way that to get this under control that we've found so far, and this has been reported to us from many doctors who have using, are using this with their patients, is to use this mouthwash and it comes in a couple of different flavors. This happens to be a, a cinnamon flavor, but all you need is a capful amount. Now you've irrigated, your mouth is really spotless, but your tonsils are still a problem. So we're gonna take a capful amount of this, we're gonna swish it around your mouth, and it's not so much, it's, I say, use less, swish longer, okay? So you wanna have contact time, and then, Put some in the back of your throat, gargle real well, and you can even swallow some. Okay. Okay, it feels really good. You'll see your whole oral pharynx will be clean, and at that moment, you're gonna say, wow, it's really gonna be different than what you've experienced so far. Okay. All right? And there's no chemicals, there's no preservatives in any of these products, you could eat them. Okay, perfect. Okay, although I don't recommend it as a meal. <laughs> I, I, I prefer peanut butter and jelly. Right. Rather, okay. <laughs> Now we also have another product, this is called Perio Rub, and it's actually this formula here, gelled, and for people that can't irrigate in between times, they, and I only recommend actually irrigating once a day. Once a day is more than adequate. If you, if you brush your teeth a couple, two, three times a day, that's wonderful, but if you get your mouth bacteriologically clean, in other words, get rid of the bacteria below the gum line. Once a day is all you need to do to really keep your mouth in tip-top shape. Now this product is something that you can carry in your purse or your pocket, it's a little tube, and, and you can take a little bit of it on a clean finger and rub it into your gums, and it's very substantive. It's like a therapeutic breath freshener. And so, like, when the moment's right, will your breath be ready? Right. And so, <laughs> this is the product to have because it doesn't have any sugars in it. It's perfect for, for breaking down the bacteria. It's also going to help heal your gums. And I've been using this, believe it or not, at, it's a wonderful teething gel for babies. It's perfectly safe for them. But I've been using it as a first aid cream for years and years now. And um, I, because I lived on a sailboat, and, and I would cut myself, I'd, I would put a little bit of this, a dab on the cut, put a Band-Aid on it, and uh, I never had a single infection. 
in, in all the years that I lived on my boat, but I treated it all with, uh, you know, this is an antimicrobial. This is much better than an antibiotic. So do you have any questions about this? Uh, do you think you learned it? I definitely learned a lot. I have a lot to do. So. You do? Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank okay. you. Okay. Well, thank you very, very much. And uh, we appreciate your wisdom over the years. Well, thanks for yeah. having me.